So we're going to take what we just did on that exploration, but we're going to transform all the graphs. So looking at that first one, you're not going to be able to do the domain and range right away. So just hold off on those. Just don't forget to answer them. All right. What is your amplitude automatically? None. Just write none. You're going to do this the same way we did sine and cosine. How did you do the period for sine and cosine? Yeah, 2 pi over, it, we called B. Do you remember that A, B, C, and D? It's the number in front of the X, which in this case is 2. So what's that going to give you? Yeah, just pi. So look, this is what happened. It was 2 pi. We condensed it. We squished it and shrunk it together. It's a horizontal shrink. So now it's just pi. Phase shift is left and right. Do you see anything added and subtracted in here? Nope, so zero or none. And then what's your vertical translation? Yep. Down three, or you can just say negative three. All right, you're gonna do this the same way. It's not any different. Where do you start? Yep. Zero pi, same as your phase shift. You can just put zero, I like putting zero pi. And then you add the period because you wanna do one full cycle. So it's always nice when this is zero. Um, you would add pi, so that would take you to Pi. Now, here, this is the difficult part, all right? Ends up being fractions a lot of the time. What's halfway in between zero pi and one pi? Yeah, pi over two, a half a pi. And then you have to break it down again. So what do halves break down into? Four. Four. So this would be pi over four. And then you can kind of just count. So that's one fourth. This is two fourths. The next one's three fourths. And then four fourths is one whole pi. But here's the thing. If you can't get that, it doesn't matter because you're going to just go around your circle and subtract three. Whatever you get, and then you're going to subtract three. Undefined minus three is just undefined. Do you get what I'm saying? An asymptote's an asymptote. All right. So let's go around our circle. What's your first y value? Zero. When you flip that, you get undefined cool now we're up at the top what's your y value one if you flip that it is still one minus three negative two what's the next one without even looking at the circle now we're at the bottom of the circle what's your y value if you flip negative one it is still negative one minus three, negative four. And then the last one is undefined. The process is not different. You're just flipping the Y values. Instead of just using the Y value, you're flipping them. Process is the same. Now, what do I want each of my tick marks to be worth down here? What do I need to count by? Fourths. So the easiest way to do that is go to the fourth one and call it pi. Now, you know, all the ones in between are fourths. So then you can go to the eighth one and call that two pi, or you could go to the left, call that one negative pi. I said label at least three. If you only did two on your quiz, but they were correct, I like let it go. Just enough so that I can know what you're doing. Yes, and if you want, that's personal preference. If you want yours spaced out a little bit, that's fine too. All right, um, so zero pi, we have an asymptote. I know that's always hard to draw it on the axes. All right, and then at pi over four, we're at negative two. Yeah, mine is gonna be really scrunched together, huh? That's okay, it's not wrong. And then another asymptote, and then negative four, two, four, and then another asymptote. So I want you to continue, same as we did for sign, I want you to continue it for one more cycle to show me that you can keep the pattern going. So I wanna see two smiley faces and two frowny faces. So just do it for once more. So the next point's at negative two, and then an asymptote, and then negative four, and then another asymptote. Yeah, you know what, Sam? I think you had the right idea. I should have spaced mine out a little bit too, but oh well, whatever. They should face away from each other. You should get a gap in between. So don't make them face towards each other. You should get like a, a space in between them. So I want to see two facing up and two facing down. And then just don't forget to go back 
and answer your domain and range. I'll do the range first because I think it's easier. It's a little bit more intuitive. You can kind of just sweep downwards to upwards. It'll be negative infinity to what? Yep, negative four bracket union, negative two to infinity. And then for the domain, you want everything except where the asymptotes are. So it's all X not equal to, where's the first one? Yeah, you want either zero or the first positive one. This one's zero, which is always nice. So no pi plus however often they happen. So let's see, we've got one at zero and then pi over two and then pi and then three pi over two. So how often are they happening? Half a pi. So I would write pi over two n. If, now, usually I just look at the graph and figure that out. But if you're like, hey, I want a process, give me like some steps, Miss Cole, that's going to be half the period. If you're like, I want a method, give me a method to figure that out instead of just looking at it, uh, that will be half the period. Cool. So it's the first one and then half the period. And that went well, I think. <laughs> when no one really said anything, let's try it again. Oh, this one's going to be tougher. First of all, do you see that one out front? Did you look okay? Oh, would you like another sheet? I have plenty. Yeah. All right, so first of all, do you see that one that's out front? That does tend to bother everybody when that gets written out front instead of at the end. So here's my first suggestion. Scribble that out and put plus one at the end. I don't know why, but being written the other way around just throws everybody off. So let's just fix it right away. Okay. Second thing, do you see how there's a one half X minus pi over four in there? You are going to have to factor out the one half in order to see what the phase shift is. This phase shift is not pi over four. You have to factor that first. I'm just gonna write it right above here. So it's negative two cosecant, leave a little blank and then plus one. We're gonna have to factor a one half out real quick. Dividing by a half is the same as multiplying by two. Okay, so what you're gonna do is put a one half and then pretend you multiplied a two through there. Again, dividing by a half, same as multiplying by two. If you distribute a two into this, what will you get? Just X, which is kind of the point, good. Minus, good. If you multiply that by a two, you would get two fourths, which is one half. Here's the other way you can check that. If you were like, Ms. Cole, I totally lost you. If you distribute this one half back through there, will you get what we started with? Yes, that's what we did, factoring, right? So now let's go through and answer our stuff. You have to wait on domain and range. So let's start here. What's your amplitude? None. Just don't forget that. That's only for a wave. Period. It would be two pi over one half. It's whatever's in front of the x. So what does that give you? Four pi, two times two is four. So you took it and stretched it this way. So it's now horizontally stretched. All right, phase shift, look at the factored version. This is your left or right. What direction did it go? It went right pi over two. So you can put right pi over two or just pi over two. And if you wanna go ahead and put that in your table, that's where you're gonna start. That's always your, your starting spot. And then what's your vertical translation? One, up one. Cool. You're gonna go around your circle, flip all the Y values, and then do what to them? After you go around the circle, you flip the Y values and then you have to do the stuff outside. So times by negative two plus one. Okay, what's your first Y value? Zero. So. Oh, I got ahead of myself. I didn't do the left side of the table. You know what? That's fine. Let me illustrate for you that you don't even need it. We're gonna do we're gonna do the right side first. We're gonna be rebels, right? Now you're at the top of the circle. What's your y value? One. Flip it. One. 
times negative two, negative two, plus one, negative one. The next one is undefined. Now you're at the bottom of the circle. Your y value is negative one times negative two, two, plus one, three, and then undefined. You know what? I'm glad that happened. Look, I just showed you that you don't even need the left side of the table. So if you get stuck on that, you can always just like move on without it. Make something up. Don't leave it blank. Like put something there. All right, so we started with our phase shift and then you have to add the period, four pi. So if you have a half a pi and you add four pi, that would be four and a half pi. Come on with me there. Now you can't write 4.5 pi. That's not a thing. How many halves is that? It'd be nine halves. And I'm sorry, go ahead. No, that would be, you're thinking of that weird one I put on the other notes. Like if there was a negative inside of here, I'm not going to do that to you. Yeah, don't worry about that. Don't, don't overthink it. All right, so I need halfway between one and nine. Five, so this would be five pi over two. And then halfway between one and five, are we just going to get all the odd ones? One, three, five, seven, nine. Okay. Yeah, at a certain point, it's pattern driven. You can just find the pattern. That's hard though. Like I will grant you, that's difficult to do. And the fact that they're all pi over two, you know, bothers everybody. So I get it. All right, so we want to label all our tick marks by halves. The easiest way to do that is skip one and call the second one pi, and then skip one and call the second one two pi, and so on. Because then you know each of them is a half. And if you want to stretch yours out a little further, you can leave more blanks in there, but as long as it's uniform. And then you're going to take your table information, put it on your graph. I'm not going to say much about that. I'm going to just draw mine. You draw yours. Make sure they match. You're just taking this information, putting it on the table. You want two that are facing up and two that are facing down. And you're going to know if your graph is not right, like, or if you count wrong, because um, it'll be lopsided. You know what I mean? It won't look right if you mess something up. I was just giving wait time for that. Are you guys all okay? Does yours look like mine? Did you notice how you're skipping every other tick mark? That's because these all ended up odd. One half, three halves, five halves. Like, do you see how every other tick mark there isn't something? Like you have an asymptote and then one's blank and then there's your point and then one's blank and then you have an asymptote. Like, is anyone listening? <laughs> I feel like in this class I just talk. I don't know if any of it's landing, but anyway. All right, I would go back and do the range first because I think it's a little bit easier, a little bit more intuitive. It'll be negative infinity up to where? Negative one, and then union three to infinity, perfect. And then your domain is everything except where the asymptotes are. And it's the first one plus however often they happen. And if you don't like just you know counting it on the grid, it's gonna be half the period. So where's the first one? This one's not zero this time. Where's our first asymptote? Pi over two plus, and then you can either look at the graph or you can go, oh, it's half the period. So it'd be plus what? Two pi n. Beautiful. So those were cosecant. When we flip it over, we're gonna do a couple that are secant. The exact same process, except what? What's the only difference? We're gonna take what values from our circle? The x values, and I'm sorry, I flipped that over really fast. I apologize. So 
So same process, only difference is we're going to flip all of the x values. So looking at this one, can't do domain and range yet? What's your amplitude? None. Only for a wave. What are you going to write for period? Two pi over pi. So interestingly, what happens there? It's just two. What that means in your table, you will have no pi. On your axis, you will have no pi. The pi is going to be gone, all right? Phase shift, what do you think? Yeah, none, zero or none. And vertical translation, so up or down. Uh, again, none. Great. So where do you start over here? Zero. You don't need to put pi. There won't be any pi. And then you add two. Oh, this one's nice and easy. I like this one. What's halfway between zero and two? One. And then what goes here? One half. And then three halves. Cool. That was as easy as it gets. I like that one. The pi went away. All right. What's your first x value? X values this time. One. And then what do you have to do to it? You have to do the stuff that's on the outsides. Multiply it by a half and then, you know, add nothing. All right. So it'll be a half. And then what's the next one without even looking up there? Undefined. Good. Your next x value would be negative one. If you flip that, it's still negative one times a half, negative a half, then undefined, and then, aren't these like, are you getting it? Just keep the pattern going. All right, what do you wanna label your tick marks by? We have to count by halves, so. I think the easiest way to do that would be skip one and put one, except do you know how mine got really squished together here? Let me show you another way you can do this to spread it out a little bit. Instead of skipping one and then putting one, go to the fourth one and call that one. It'll spread it out a little bit more and give you a little bit more space. Then you can go to the eighth one and call that two. You don't have to do, this comes down to personal preference. Like I'm just saying, so it won't be all scrunched together. And then you're just gonna take this information and put it uh, on your graph. So zero, a half. One half is an asymptote. I'm not gonna read all these to you, that's gonna be annoying. And again, I want you to keep the pattern going until you have two that are facing up and two that are facing down. All right, so what is our range? Negative infinity to what? Negative a half, and then union half to infinity. And then your domain, all x not equal to, where is the first one, the first positive asymptote? Is that one half? Yeah, because this is one. Good. So one half. Yeah. One half plus, and you can either look at the graph and just see however often they happen, or it's half the period. So it would be plus what? Yeah, one n. Or even just n. You don't even have to put the one. Plus one n. They happen every one. Cool. I liked that one, though. I feel like that one was not as hard as some of the other ones. All right, last one. 
you're going to need to factor the three out of this to be able to see what the phase shift is. So I'm just going to write above. It's going to be secant, leave yourself a gap, minus one. So we're going to factor out a three, GCF. So you're going to put a three. What's left once you factor out a three? X plus, it will be a fraction. Yeah, a third pi, pi over three. And the way you can check it is if you distribute that three back through there, you're going to get what you started with. All right, that went well. I didn't have to like pull any teeth there. All right, what are we going to fill in first? Amplitude is none. What's the period going to be? 2 pi over 3, which doesn't reduce. So just 2 pi over 3. We'll deal with that. That makes me a little nervous. That might be a bit difficult, but we'll deal with it. All right, phase shift, left and right. Careful because it's backwards. Good. We went left pi over 3. So you can either write left pi over 3, like L-E-F-T pi over 3, or just negative pi over 3. I kind of like the negative better because that's what's going to go first in your table. Oh, and actually, that's not going to be too bad because those have a common denominator. So actually, it won't be too bad. All right. What's your vertical translation? Yeah, down 1, or you can just say negative 1. So yeah, this won't be too terrible. Negative pi over 3 is where we're starting, and then you're going to add 2 pi over 3. So kiddos, negative a third plus 2 thirds is 1 third. And actually, this keeps getting better. I know it looked scary at first, but what's halfway in between negative a third and positive a third? Yeah, zero. Now, we do have to break down thirds, but I did ask you this once before, and you guys got it. If you break down thirds... Six, good. So this will be negative pi over six and positive pi over six. Beautiful. That went great. We're going to go around our circle, get all our x values, flip them, and then do what to them? Uh, we're going to multiply by one, which essentially you don't have to do anything, and then subtract one. So just the stuff that's outside. That's why I always box that in. All right, so what's your first x number? One, flip that. 1, minus 1, 0. And then the next one is undefined. And then your next x value, we're on the left side of the circle now, is what's your x value? Negative 1, minus 1, negative 2, and then undefined, and then 0. Cool. So I'm going to go to the sixth tick mark, one, two, three, four, five, six, and call that pi. And now I know all the ones in between are a six. And then I'm going to go one, two, three, five, six this way, call that negative pi, because now I know they're all a six. So that's good enough. And then again, you're just taking everything from your table and putting it on the grid. This is going to be a little scrunched together, but. So again, do two facing up and two facing down. And they shouldn't cross each other. You should have that blank space in the middle. That's one of the, I keep bringing that up because it's one of the common mistakes I see is people make them face the wrong way and they like pass each other. Just make sure you have that gap in the middle. All right, so your range, negative infinity up to negative two. And then it picks back up at zero. I feel like once you get the graph, that's not too bad. And if your graph's wrong, but your range matches your graph, then I give you credit for that. And then domain. It's everything except where the asymptotes are. But there's an infinite number of them. That's why we write it this way. Where's the first one? And it's the first positive one or zero? 
Yeah, the first one's at pi over six. Plus, however often they happen. So you can either like just look at the picture and like count it out and see, or it is gonna be half the period. So if this is two pi over three, half of that would just be one pi over three. And that was weird because it came out to thirds and sixths. We're a lot more used to halves and fourths. Do you know what I'm saying? Like halves, fourths, eighths, those usually go well when it turns into thirds and sixths. You music people know that. 